No, you've not found yourself watching the shittest knockoff of Blue Peter. Well, a little bit. But what I've got in front of me is the stuff that you're going to need to make two of my favourite kinds of backdrops. The first one is like a fabric backdrop. So one of those with like kind of grungy textures, sort of similar to what I've got behind me, if you can kind of see it. It's often in like greens, like deep greens and blues. You'll have seen it uh, from people like this. It just looks awesome. You see it all the time, portrait photographers, you know, you see them on Instagram and stuff like that. One of my favorite photographers of all time, Dan Winters has a phenomenal series that he uses backdrops like this so much. And it's basically just these dust sheets and some paint, and that's it. The next backdrop, if you are obsessed with food photographers on Instagram, you'll have seen this kind of thing. It's grungy textured, like concrete, kind of rustic, just, it makes, if you've got like a really clean setup with your plates and, and the stuff that goes with it, if you put them onto this kind of background, it just looks fantastic, really, really beautiful. In fact, I'm gonna introduce you to someone, if you don't know her work, you need to check it out. It's this girl. She does images like this. Just, oh, just so, such good images. And she uses backdrops similar to this. And basically all you're gonna need for this is some board, some filler, you know, the kind of stuff that you use when you punch a hole through your plasterboard wall. Um, one of these like spatula -y things, they're like 50p. Um, and just some black paint. And for the other one you'll need other stuff as well. But without further ado, let's get making it. That didn't work. If you want it to be grey, it stands to reason that you'd add black paint to the white filler. But don't bother mixing well. This is where the spreader comes in. Be uneven. It'll add to the effect. For a pure white one, leave the filler unchanged. And apply in the same manner. So for the fabric one, these things come in huge sheets. So what I'm gonna to need to do is I'm gonna to need to cut it down. And I'm gonna do a smaller one than I actually want, just because it's gonna be easier to show you the whole thing, basically. Because this studio isn't very big. And that side's not mine. That's not my domain. So let's cut this up. A sewing machine is an incredibly useful tool. Learn how to use it. Learn how to repair it. A small tarpaulin will help keep the paint from the floor. I was lucky. I could stretch this by nailing it down. But you can tape it too. Apply a coat of white liberally. This will prep the canvas. Allow to dry. Have a color scheme in mind and try to stick to it. I chose greens and browns. Starting from the middle, use a light paint 
roll it on. Add accents of darker colours and use the roller to mix it in. Mix progressively darker paint as you get to the outer edges. Experiment with adding texture by adding accents of darker colours. Remember that even though in theory blue and yellow mean green, in practice your results may vary. Terrapa sponge, removing the man-made edges, leaving you with a natural, organic shape. The sponge work is nearly your final layer. All that's left to do after this is to dry brush. Unfortunately, that was just apple juice. Unfortunately. So this video has taken me a lot longer to put together than I would have liked. First of all, this thing took a lot longer to dry than I expected. Then Christmas happened. And this happened. And now it's January, but here we go. Basically, it's done. I'm really happy with how they turned out. I think they look so much better than the amount of money that you spend on them, basically. Yes, they take quite a bit of time. They take a little bit of sort of creativity, but you know, for what you get as an end result, and you know, you can scale these up if you've got the space. Yeah, so what you get as an end result is fantastic. You can see from the footage and also I'll link below to my blog post with the final images. And if you go and follow me on Instagram as well, you'll see them there. The link for that is also down below. I hope you guys try these because um, they're great. They're really, whether you try the, the fabric one or the, um, the kind of polyfiller one, I'd love you guys to, to send me some images tag me in them on Instagram or something like that. I'd love to see them. So if you like this video, check out the other two. I'll link them down below. The last two videos on shooting food in natural light and the other sort of DIY backdrops that I did. They're pretty useful when they go hand in hand with this. And if you want to see more, hit the subscribe button, the little bell next to it as well. That'll get you, you know, notified. And um, yeah, just give me a like, go on, if you would. That's it from me. First video. First video. First video of the year. I think. Was there another one?